most highly anticipated superhero movie of all time, Avengers Infinity War, is set to premiere in Australia next week on Anzac Day. But one Sydney father has criticised Marvel's call to capitalise on the public holiday, saying by diminishing Anzac Day to a day for launching new movie blockbusters, we diminish it and the values it represents. Hello, I'm Paul Barry. Welcome to Media Watch. And that was Nine's Today Show firing up the annual outrage about failing to honour our diggers' sacrifice in war. Launching a movie on Anzac Day, of all things. And before long, Carl Stefanovic was shooting his mouth off at the cinema chain. Bringing the release a day early smacks, to me, of a grubby cash grab. Well, grab your cash somewhere else. Exploit another day. Not on what I believe is the most important day on our nation's calendar. And right on cue, the rest of the media soon joined in. Grubby cash grab. Stefanovic lashes cinemas over Avengers Anzac Day opening. Marvel faces Anzac Day boycott for Avengers film. But if it really was so awful, where was the outrage five days later when You Know Who made an announcement about today's cash call giveaway on, wait for it, yes, Anzac Day? To be in the running for the next draw, which is tomorrow. It is. You need the code word ANZAC. Yes, so for 30 grand, you've got to be in it to win it. ANZAC is our code word. Code word ANZAC, our solemn day of remembrance being used in a lottery to boost Nine's ratings. That's not just disrespectful, it's against the law, as was soon pointed out. I think Channel 9 may have breached the Protection of Word ANZAC Act 1920 today. And indeed they had, or would have done, had the cash grab gone ahead. Because, as the Department of Veterans Affairs told MediaWatch... The Nine Network did not seek permission to use the word ANZAC for the Today Show's cash call competition. Even if they had, permission would not normally be granted to use the word ANZAC in this manner. And no doubt that's why Nine rapidly changed its mind and canned its competition, with Carl telling viewers... Now, because of our special Anzac Day coverage, we won't be making our daily cash call this morning, but for those of you who entered, do not worry, do not be concerned, do not lose any sleep. You are still in the draw. And next day, the cash call did indeed take place, but with the code word changed to peace. So, did that get Nine off the Anzac hook? Quite possibly not. Veterans Affairs told Media Watch it had... ...contacted the Nine network to discuss their breach of the regulations. No decisions have been made at this stage, but for serious breaches of the regulations, a penalty of up to 12 months imprisonment may apply. The good news for Carl and Nine is that the alternative to prison is a fine of up to $10,200 for a natural person and $51,000 for a body corporate. And while that may sound harsh, let's remember it was Carl who told us. I might be a wowser, but please keep this day sacred. But now, to another nine star facing embarrassment. This time the network's former managing director, Eddie Maguire, whose immense talent for publicity does not always serve him well. Eddie Maguire vows to sue Facebook over erectile dysfunction fake news. Yes, Nine's footy show host fired up last week about this fake ad, which popped up on Facebook and quickly made it to the TV news. Facebook is running ads claiming Maguire is behind a new product for erectile dysfunction. The product, of which he's apparently the face of, is a natural remedy made up in part by monkey head mushrooms and horny goat weed. The article goes so far as to claim Maguire is in partnership with TV shrink Dr Phil. Are you kidding me? Well, yes, they are, because the ad, mocked up like a GQ interview, was just a fake and has now been taken down. But you have to wonder how many people would have known about it had an angry Eddie not revealed all last Monday on his Triple M Breakfast Show, where co-host Will Anderson took great delight in reading it all out. I've tried Viagra. I've tried red ginseng. I've tried Cialis. Try his Vexan, blows them all away. <laughs> As the Triple M team and Melbourne listeners split their sides, poor Eddie struggled to see the joke and protested. It's uh, not only fake news, it's actually defamatory and mm. it's, it's incorrect. Now, if this was... Well, a... it's only defamatory if it's not true. Have you tried <laughs> Vi Viagra? Have you tried Red yes. Ginseng? Yes. Have you tried Cialis? Good. As you've been quoted saying in this article. All good questions. Maguire then called up one of the show's sponsors, the law firm Gordon Legal, to give them a plug and, more importantly, offer them the job of getting redress. You want to take the, the gig on? I'll start straight away, Eddie. All right, I'll talk to you as soon as we get off air. Let's go after him and let's fix up Facebook. 
And meanwhile, as Eddie maintained his rage for justice, the damage and the ridicule were piling up, with everyone having fun at his expense. Apparently the product's rushing off the shelves, Eddie. We're told that <laughs> you can no longer buy it, mate. It's gone. Well, apparently so. Well, you've got a pocket full of it there, Price. <laughs> so, Eddie, if people are watching tonight, what yeah. would be your recommendation for how to get G'd up? <laughs> But there was even more ribbing to come. By the time Eddie checked in for work on the footy show three days later, his mate Sam Newman had it all worked out. Ed, I could have fixed this. You didn't need to invest money with Dr Phil. I could have told you how to uh, get the old vermilion tip kidney prodder up and about. So, after a week of dick jokes from his mates, what are Eddie's chances of, quote, suing the arse off Facebook? Sad to say, they are slim. As lawyer Justin Quill told the Sydney Morning Herald, the law in Australia, as it stands, says Facebook and Google are not liable for defamatory information they carry while they don't know about it. And in the case of Eddie's ad, once Facebook knew about it, they quickly took it down. But, says Quill, Maguire could try to change the common law by challenging the fairness of Facebook's publish first, remove later approach. Eddie might decide he's going to be the champion of taking Facebook on and making them a publisher that's accountable, as other publishers are. But that would be a huge ask, and a big expense, and yet more ridicule to endure. However, he may want to watch a case in the British courts where Martin Lewis, founder of a popular money-saving consumer site, is suing Facebook for publishing 50 ads by scammers who've used his name and picture, declaring last week... Enough is enough. I've been fighting for over a year to stop Facebook letting scammers use my name and face to rip off vulnerable people. Yet it continues. My hope is this lawsuit will force it to change its system. Nothing else has worked. I think it's fair to say we wish him luck, but we doubt it will slow Facebook's march to world domination, which, undented by privacy scandals, fake news, Russian meddling in the US election, Zuckerberg's evidence to Congress, or indeed Eddie's vow to sue their ass, has seen revenue and profits surge yet again. Advertising revenue, the main driver of Facebook's top line, rose to about 11.8 billion US dollars in the first quarter, up 50% from the 7.86 billion US dollars collected a year ago. Yep, a 50% rise in revenue in just one year. And despite all those calls to delete Facebook, yet another increase in people on the site. Facebook added about 70 million monthly users during the first three months of the year, bringing its overall user base to 2.2 billion, up from 2.13 billion at the end of 2017. That is getting close to one in every three people in the world. But now, let's kick back and take a holiday with Weekend Today to beautiful, memorable Myanmar. For travellers looking for an authentic Asian holiday experience, Myanmar might just be the place. As David Whitehill shows, tourists can easily get a taste of what everyday life is like for the 54 million people who live there. Myanmar is one of the lesser known Asian destinations, but I can tell you it's also one of the most incredible. So incredible, in fact, that just one story wasn't nearly enough. David Whitehill, a former Clio Bachelor of the Year, compiled five reports over five weeks for Nine's Weekend Today. And boy, did he love the place. So right now is the most exciting time to come here as the country gets opened up to the entire world. What can I say about Myanmar? It is such a raw and authentic kind of travel experience. What I find even more incredible is that I have this virtually to myself. Yes, there are few tourists among Myanmar's 54 million residents, and even fewer Muslims. Because, as you might have forgotten while watching Nine, the nation's Rohingya Muslims have long been persecuted and targeted by the army with appalling violence. It's been called the biggest humanitarian crisis of 2017. The mass exodus of more than 600,000 Rohingyas from Myanmar. In 2017, we saw no clearer example than the Myanmar military's campaign of ethnic cleansing against the Rohingya population. It was arguably the biggest human rights story of 2017. Now, you think the Rohingyas' plight might have warranted a mention in today's travelogue, because the program's produced by Nine's news department. 
You might also have expected words of caution for would-be cruisers, because the Australian government reckons parts of Rakhine State, which Whitehill wisely avoided, are a no-go zone. And it urges a high degree of caution all over Myanmar. Pay close attention to your personal security at all times. Monitor the media and other sources about possible new security risks. But you wouldn't have got anything by monitoring today, or much from Nine News, where one of the only recent references to Myanmar's alleged genocide was this brief report in February, which arguably made headlines because Hollywood star Angelina Jolie was talking about it. Otherwise, it seems Myanmar only gets on Nine when a cruise company is paying the bills. Discover natural beauty, incredible historical sites and the hidden treasures of Myanmar on Scenic's 14-day mystical Irrawaddy cruise and tour travelling from Yangon to Mandalay. And for viewers of Weekend Today, Scenic has an exclusive offer just for you. That was the plug after each of those Today reports. And the last thing Scenic would want in its sponsored content is rape and murder. But didn't Nine, or its experienced globe-trotting presenters, Alison Langdon and Peter Stefanovic, think they had a duty to tell viewers what was going on in the country? The network wouldn't say, only that Scenic had... No editorial influence or impact on Today or its news coverage. Well, if that's so, it makes Nine's omission of the troubles there even more disturbing. And finally tonight, to the Banking Royal Commission and the downfall of a media star. Sam Henderson is a financial advisor who built his business on the back of his celebrity. I have the uh, honour of hosting Your Money, Your Call on Sky News Business every Thursday night. Also write for Money Magazine every month and uh, the Australian Financial Review every week. So we are fairly prolific producers of content. That was July last year. But last week, Sam's brilliant career imploded after he took his seat at the Banking Royal Commission, where it was revealed that... His staff had impersonated a client to get information from her super fund. He had lied on his CV about his qualifications and he had given, quote, risible advice. Sam Henderson, who appears on the Sky News Business Channel and Network 10, was accused of giving advice that would have seen a client lose half a million dollars. Close to retirement, Donna McKenna wanted investment options. Who did you decide to seek financial advice from? The man sitting there, Sam Henderson. Money Manager with Sam Henderson. Now, uh, switching to investment strategy. Good evening, Australia. Can you feel the vibe? <laughs> I can. I had seen um, uh, Sam Henderson uh, on, on television. Donna McKenna told the Royal Commission she'd also read Sam's articles in the Financial Review and Money magazine. And they were pretty hard to miss. In the last 12 months, we've clocked about 40 AFR columns where Henderson answered questions from readers and at least 30 evening programs on Sky Business, and eight appearances on A Current Affair, where he gave much more than just personal investment advice. Finance expert, Sam Henderson. Oh, right now, the retail space is the most competitive it's ever been. Yep, Sam was rent-a-quote, which is why the project used him too, on anything from housing to credit card rates and superannuation. Finance expert, Sam Henderson, has had a gutful and he joins us now. Sam, uh, how do you find out if your boss isn't paying you super? In the wake of Henderson's appearance at the Commission, Sky, Fairfax and Money Magazine have all dropped him. But why did the media love him so much in the first place? No one is keen to explain, but Henderson told us he did his Sky program and all his columns for free. So there is your answer. Now we're wondering how many viewers or readers became his clients or took his advice. And the Fin Reviews obviously had the same thought because it told MediaWatch it's going back through his columns and that an initial review confirms that Henderson's mostly technical advice appears appropriate. Any inappropriate advice, says the Finn, will be corrected. Although surely in that case, any damage will already have been done. And there's more about tonight's stories on our Facebook page or our website, where you can get a transcript and download the program. You can also catch up with us on iView and contact me or MediaWatch on Twitter. And don't forget, MediaBytes every Thursday. But for now, until next week, that's it from us. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.